President Assad lays down a political solution for the crisis consisting of three stages asserting that Syria will return stronger. President Assad states that what's happening in Syria is a struggle between the country and its enemy, between the people and the murderers. President Assad says Syria will refuse to be disgraced and rejects being under custody, and this is what bothers the West. President Assad says that what and who we bet on making Syria weak so that it would forget its Golan and its occupied land is following his own illusion. Good afternoon. Welcome to the News Bulletin. I'm Daniel Nizam. President Bashar al-Assad gave a speech this morning about the latest events in Syria and the region. He, he asserted that pain has hovered over Syria as a black cloud. Many people have lost their loved ones and were deprived of their basic daily needs. This pain has spread over the whole country. He said that pain should give birth to hope. The black cloud may cover the sun, but it carries rain. That would clean the land. He asserted that the sadness and the pain strengthens and the steadfastness of our country, which will come out of this crisis and will be full of strength and comprehensive national movement that saves our homeland from a savage plot that had no parallel in the history of this region. The president asserted that this national movement would be the only elixir that would heal the deep wounds in our society. It is capable of protecting Syria and giving it greater power to stay steadfast socially, politically, culturally and morally. He added that every citizen is responsible and should contribute to this national effort because this is our homeland, which we are defending. The plot against our homeland is against every citizen, so there is no place for negative attitudes or for waiting for time or for others to solve the problem. Negative attitudes could only lead to abyss. Contributing to the solution means moving ahead and not going back. It is our duty to redirect our vision according to the real compass of our homeland. The struggle is between our homeland and its enemies, between our people and the criminal terrorists, between our basic needs and those who want to deprive us and to starve us and to spread panic everywhere. The president said that the murderers who killed innocent civilians wanted to kill enlightenment after killing mines in order to spread their ignorance everywhere. They destroyed the infrastructure in order to spread suffering and to deprive children of their schools. They wanted to destroy the future of our homeland. They cut off electric power supplies and fuel oil in order to leave children and all people suffering in the cold of winter without any medicine. They showed their savagery. They stole bread from the people in order to cause famine. Is this a struggle for seats of office or is it a struggle between the homeland and its enemies? These enemies are trying to terrorize our people who never allowed them to fragmentize Syria. The president denied the claim of the terrorists that they were leading a revolution. These enemies have failed, they failed in the first stage of their plot, so they moved to the second stage. They attacked cities like wolves whenever and wherever the people rejected them and exposed their falsehood. They decided to spread terror everywhere without distinction. They used gangs and supported those gangs from behind, but the people and the army repulsed them. So those terrorist extremists were forced to fight in the front ranks. Their suspicious ideology was important from abroad. They call themselves jihadists and they import terrorists from everywhere, sabotaging, kidnapping and working as spies for foreign imperialists. The president added that the crisis had other dimensions. There were those who seek to fragmentize Syria and those who seek to weaken it by supplying the criminals with weapons, money and training. There are those regional powers seeking a place in history through shedding blood in Syria. But Syria and its people are stronger and would never forget their crimes. Syria will remain a sovereign, independent country. This irritates the West, which plots 
to get Syria out of the political equation in this region. The West wants to strike at the idea of resistance and to turn us into subservient agents. However, the international community contains many countries that are just and honest, including Russia and China, the BRICS countries which reject intervention in internal affairs and reject the cause of destabilization in the region. We must take all these facts, factors into consideration when we seek a real solution. The difference was considered between supporters and opponents of the system. However, differences in the civilized world should be based on how to achieve progress, not to go back dozens of years. When some elements inside the country become servants of foreign forces against the independence of their homeland, then we must defend the homeland and unite against foreign aggression that uses internal tools. We are witnessing a state of war with every meaning of the word more deadly than traditional wars. The enemies are trying to force us to carry out their own agendas. They are utilizing a handful of Syrians and many strangers and foreigners to destroy our country. This war is being waged by use of defense in defense of our homeland, side by side with reform. It will only strengthen our unity and consolidate our immunity against foreign plots. Reform cannot progress without security. Reform is carried out by one hand while the other strikes against terrorism. We in Syria have never rejected political solution. We stretched open hands to all those carrying national political pro projects or initiatives capable of pushing Syria forward. We will never have dialogue with extremist terrorists who believe only in the language of blood and panic. We will never have dialogue with gangs obeying orders from abroad. Foreigners order them to reject dialogue because they know very well that such dialogue would foil their plots and conspiracies. It would destroy their political future because they drowned their people with lies and spent the fortunes of their countries in supporting terrorism. They're no longer capable of justifying their aggressive policies and their involvement in bloodshed. The president wondered whether we should have dialogue with dummies of the West. Wouldn't it be better to talk to their masters? It was the West that closed the door of dialogue. It ordered its servants not to take part in the dialogue. The West is used to employ. It's used to employing tools and humble, obedient agents. But our nature is based on dignity and pride. Those who talk of political solutions without taking these facts into consideration are either ignorant or subservient agents offering their country to foreign masters and selling the blood of its martyrs. The president asserted that the political solution should be based in the first stage on regional and international commitment to stop to stopping financing and arming terrorists and to stop all terrorist acts in order to enable the displaced people to return home safely. After that, our armed forces will stop their operations and keep the right to retaliate whenever the security of the homeland is subjected to any aggression. Second, there will be a mechanism of the commitment of everybody to the first item and to protect the borders. Third, the government will carry out direct and intensive contacts with all specters and sectors of the Syrian society. This will lead to a conference of national dialogue, including all the forces and parties wishing to find a solution in Syria. The second stage is when the government calls for a comprehensive conference of national dialogue in order to set up a national convention preserving Syria's unity and territorial integrity away from any foreign intervention and rejection of all types of terrorism and violence. The convention would draw a serious political future and present the constitutional, judicial and political and economic features. This will include approving new laws for political parties, elections, local administration and other matters. Second, the national convention will go to a referendum. Third, an enlarged government will be formed containing all the components of the Syrian community in order to carry out the items of the National Convention. Fourth, the Constitution will go to public referendum. Once approved, the enlarged government will, be, will set up the laws agreed upon in the dialogue according to the new Constitution. Then, new parliamentary elections 
will be carried out. Second, a general conference of national reconciliation will be held, accompanied by a general amnesty to free those detained because of the events, while civil rights will be protected for those who have those rights. Third, the infrastructure will be rehabilitated and compensation will be paid to the people harmed by the events. The President asserted that any initiative will, would be used, will be used to help the Syrians, but never to replace them. We do not want anybody from abroad to come and tell us what we should do. Our support of initiatives does not mean that we accept the foreign interpretation of such initiatives. Syria accepts advice, but it will never accept diktats. We accept assistance, but never hegemony. Any initiatives from a spring source will only be temporary, like bubbles. The president asserted that Syria remained above everybody. The people have helped the army in many ways against the terrorists. The president greeted the men of the Syrian army, the Syrian Arab army, in their stand in the most violent wars. This army is determined to restore safety and security to uproot terrorism. The president also greeted every citizen who carried out his national duty and stood by our armed forces. The president asserted, I am one of the people and will always remain one of them. Posts are temporary, but the homeland remains. The President asserted that Syria will never give up its principles or its rights to those who wanted to weaken Syria. We assert that Syria will never forget its occupied Golan. Syria will never give up the cause of Palestine, for which we have offered great sacrifices. Any attempt to involve the Palestinians in Syrian events will fail before they even begin. The Palestinians in Syria are carrying out their duty for their homeland like any other citizen. Orthodox, which follows the Eastern calendar celebrated today, Christmas, marking the birth of Jesus Christ, the prophet of love and peace. A mass was held on this occasion at the Church of Mark Sarkis for the Armenian Orthodox of Damascus and its followers. The mass was headed by Bishop Armash Nalbandian of the Armenian Orthodox, assisted by a number of priests and the carol choir of the church with the presence of a large number of prayers. And it's over now to Vani with our economic news. Before that, God bless you and God bless Syria and long live this beautiful and wonderful country. <laughs>